Okay. Chapter 3. Quadratic. Now, in business, you're going to need quadratics. You're going to run into quadratics a good bit, especially when you're dealing with the first quadrant. We can't quadrant. see the, the paper. I'm sorry. I didn't hit. I suck. There we go. Ding. That should send y'all a little notice. Did it come up yet? Yeah. Easily to come up yet? Yep. All right. Oh, so. I accidentally clicked ignore. My bad. <laughs> I can't work in this environment. Easily's on drugs. They ain't come down yet. Sorry. <coughs> That's all right. Just ignore me. <coughs> all right. Y'all are going to be dealing with, in business and marketing, you're going to be dealing with these guys right here. And what are those called? Parabolas. You it again? A parabola. That's what I called it in college algebra. Dr. Nobody went, I do not understand what you are seeing. I had him in college algebra my first couple of weeks until I dropped him. And, uh, and we were doing parabolic, and he was going, what is this called? And now he's going, that's parabola. I do not understand what you are saying. I didn't even know how to. I didn't even know how to say parabola. I said parabola, so it's parabola. Hey, Mr. Hubert, can you send that again, by chance? It didn't come up. Nope. Might want to minimize. It might be behind something. I just sent it. Nope. Oh, horse pucky. I'm sorry. That's all right. We got to fix it. Uh, let me do this, and we'll send it one more time. If it doesn't work this time, I'm going to have to bring you out, take you out, and bring you okay. back in. All right. I'm going to remove from meeting... And hopefully I can bring you back in. It's a parabola. EC declined your invitation. <laughs> they took that as a chance to leave. Yeah, they done. They come to Hardy's. They said that he kicked me out of class, so they left. Yeah. All right, now see if it comes up. It should come up, because I am presenting. There you go. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. Oh, I forgot about Miss Lynn Hart. She's had, I forgot about her. Let me add her right quick. <laughs> there she is. Okay, so you're going to be dealing with parabolic, parabolic functions and quadratics. Now, in high school, you were told about factoring. You were told about the shortcuts. That's the five shortcuts. I'll write them down for you right quick, but you should know them. A plus B quantity squared is equal to A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. A minus B quantity squared is equal to A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. A squared minus B squared is equal to A plus B time, bless you, A minus B. A cubed plus b cubed is equal to a plus b times a squared minus a b 
plus b squared and a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. Yeah, now y'all should all to know those. remember those. If you don't, I don't think I ever learned those. No, okay, well then so you're going to fail. I hope to God you're kidding. No, I'm serious. You should have seen who said that. I don't know who said what. I said that. I never He's, learned this. I didn't either. Yeah. I didn't learn me either. I learned this, I think. I don't yeah, remember it very well, but I learned okay, it. Okay, you need to leave. Some of it. <laughs> okay, well then, y'all are all going to fail. I hate yeah. it. So we should just quit? Yeah, go, just go ahead and leave. Okay. I guess I'll, I'll have to go week. over it then. All right? And then if you didn't learn the shortcuts, this I know they drilled in your head because they didn't want to show you completing the square. So they showed you quadratic formula. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the reason they had to is because they had to either show you quadratic formula or completing the square because you can't use factoring in the shortcuts all the time. And they have to show you so you can pass the SAT or the SACT or whatever, but they don't want to teach you the one that you have to use your brain, so they taught you the one to use on your calculator. And that's the quadratic formula. We are not going to use that. Okay? Not. Zilch, zero. Okay, so if you see quadratic formula on the test, that's a mistake. It should be completing the square. And four, completing the square. When you use completing the square, you actually have to use these two guys right here. Okay? So, um, I guess I'm going to have to do a quick review over the five shortcuts. Please. I think that please is going to help me? No. <laughs> I'm just doing it out of the kindness of my heart. I thought you did it because you had to. No, I don't have to go over this stuff. But, you know, factoring, you call the reverse F-O-I-L. I don't pronounce words with O-I-L in it because there's always some smart aleck that says something about the way I pronounce it. So I just say F-O-I-L. <laughs> and the shortcuts are as follows. We're not going to use quadratic formula because you depend on your calculator for that and completing the square. So if you haven't got all five down right quick, take a picture of the monitor or whatever so you'll have them. And I'm going to... Go on to the next. Okay. Okay. Now, reverse FOIL. X squared plus 3X plus 8. No, plus 7. Minus 7 is equal to 0. No, that's not what I want. I want uh, when you make these up in your head, you have to do them in reverse. Let's see. Four. Four. Oh, yeah. Be a minus four. Yeah. All right. When you use the reverse FOIL, you draw two sets of parentheses. You put an X here, put an X here, you put a one here, and a four here. You always look at your middle term. You got a positive there, so the biggest number has to be what? Uh, positive. Positive. Whatever that one is has to go with the biggest number, 4 or 1. What does this one mean? Negative means unlike signs, right? So if this is positive, this has got to be negative, negative 1. So x minus 1 times x plus 4 <laughs> is equal to 0. x minus 1 is equal to 0 x plus 4 is equal to 0. 
Your possible solutions are positive 1 and negative 4. All right, now that's how you do reverse FOIL. That should be knocking a cobweb or two loose. Yes, sir. You can do the same thing with shortcuts. X squared plus 4X plus 4. Now, with shortcuts, you got to know when it's a shortcut. How do you know when it's a shortcut? When it's made up of 1, the first term is a square, 2. The last term is a square, and third, 2 times the first term squared times last term squared, sorry, I'm running out of room, is equal to the middle term. Y'all remember that from high school? No, sir. I can't believe that. You must have been asleep that day. Y'all have all had Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Well, this is Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 stuff. Okay? So let's look at this one. Take the square root of the first term. Is that a perfect square? Yes. Take the square root of the last term. Is that a perfect square? Yes. So you've got a shortcut type problem. Now what I tell students to do is once you've determined whether you have a, sh a shortcut, you put the shortcut under it. x squared plus 4x plus 4 and I'm going to put, which one does it look like? Well it's got two positives, so let's go back to our shortcuts. And where do you see a trinomial with two positives? A Good job. A. You've got a shortcut with two I mean a trinomial with two positives. What about this one? Well, this is a this is a trinomial plus a what? A binomial. I didn't say anything about a binomial. I said a trinomial with two positives. And there it is. So we're going to use shortcut number one. And this is number one. This is number two, this is number three, this is number four, and this is number five. Now, they are named certain names. I don't call them the better names because it's aggravating. So I just call them shortcuts one, two, three, four, five. You can learn the names on your own. That's why it's a review, I guess. So, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to a plus b quantity squared. Take the square root of the first term. Take the square root of the last term. What's the square root of x squared? Is it a? What's the square root of four? Two. So take the x, take a and b and plug in there. And that's your answer. And that's how you use shortcuts. Question. All right. You try this one. x squared minus 6x plus 9. So which shortcut does it look like? Number two. Good job. A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. How do you check it? Well, 
X three. What's two times three times X? Six X. So <coughs> it's a shortcut. Equals A minus B quantity squared. So A is equal to what? X. B is equal to what? Three. So your answer is X minus three quantity squared. Now, I'm only going to worry about the first three because usually we don't cover the second, to the last two, unless you're in, in, in engineering algebra. So we're going to stick with mainly the first three. And here's an example of the third one. X squared minus 9. So put that one, put shortcut number 3 right up under it. And when you put shortcut number 3 up under it, A squared minus B squared is equal to A plus B times A minus B. What's the square root of x squared? x. And what's the square root of 9? 3. So x plus 3, x minus 3. Now a lot of people, when I do this problem right here, they say, well, that can't be right. If you do the FOIL method, you're going to get a middle term. Let's see x times x is x squared. x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x plus 3x minus 9. And what always happens to these two terms, they cancel. They cancel out. That's why shortcut number 3 is shortcut number 3. x squared minus 9. Okay, so that's a kind of a review of the shortcuts. Number one and number two is more important because we're going to be using shortcuts with completing the square. Now, let's talk about the parent graphs right quick. I want everybody to take a sheet of paper, a clean sheet of paper, turn it landscape. I want you to draw eight. Windows. Line across. Try to make a little bit more noise. Okay. And you can put f of x is equal to x to the first. f of x is equal to x to the second. Yeah, just come on in whenever. How was breakfast? Good. F of X is equal to X to the third. F of X is equal to X to the fourth. Um, F of X is equal to the square root of X. F of X is equal to the absolute value of X. f of x is equal to 1 over x, and f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. Now also, draw you some little graphs in there, like this, in each one. And this sheet is going to be called your family of graphs. Some books call it parent graphs. Family of graphs or parent graphs. You need to learn them if you haven't already learned them in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Probably Algebra 2. Draw a graph for each one, and then we're going to put in what the graphs are. 
Now let me go ahead and tell you right now, we're going to spend a lot of time you have work on email. teaching, and I'm going to I'm going to spend a lot of time teaching y'all in the next week. All right. I do not want you to do any homework yet. Has everybody got that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you to do any homework yet. I want you to work on the problems that I'm doing in the notes. There's a reason for this. I do this in my college algebra class. The, the principles, I think, in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4 are going to cover the same thing. And I'm just going to give you two tests at one time because they cover the same thing. I'll have to look and make sure Chapter 4 covers the same thing. But if not, I don't want you to do homework yet because the homework that the book does, the, the, the way that the book has things lined out is not the way that I do it. Okay? So... Just bear with me. I don't want anybody to do any homework yet, not until I figure out which sections you need to do first. All right. So, what does X to the first look well? Let's go ahead and draw your graphs. Okay, what does a what does a function to the first power look like on the graph? Uh, blah, blah, blah. A straight line. Straight line. That's called a linear equation. What does a x squared function look like? Parabola. Parabola. X cubed function. Uh, it's got two humps. Swerve. I call it a swerve. Call it what you want. Now, also make a note here. I'm going to use a different color pen. we we'll use the magenta color. Whenever this is even... You're going to have some type of what? Parabola. Whenever this is odd, you're going to have some type of what? Swerve. Ending behavior. With a odd function, the ending behavior is going to look like this. With an even function, the ending behavior is going to look like what? That. Now, in your book, it'll probably show you ending behavior, and it'll have this. It'll have this, an arrow, and it'll have a few dots, and then it'll have <coughs> like this, and then an arrow, like that. That's ending behavior. Ending behavior for this function will be a few dots, and a few dots with an arrow like that. And I'll say ending behavior. What is the ending behavior of the function? That's what it's going to ask. And all you have to do is look at the leading coefficient, I mean the leading term, and see what degree is. Is it to the second, to the fourth, to the sixth, or is it to the third, the fifth, or the seventh? If it's odd, then it's going to look like this. If it's even, it's going to look like this. Now, why did I show the f uh, to the fourth if you know it's going to look like this? Well, I'm trying to show you what happens to the function if the ending behavior is the same. As this goes up, as, as, as the exponent on the even and the odds go up, what does it do? It As flattens well, out the turn. So the parabola, here's the turn. It's going to flatten that out. I'm exaggerating here. But the ending behavior is what? The same as the parabola. But what's different? This turn right here will flatten out as this increases. Same thing with this. If you get an x to the fifth function, the x to the fifth function is going to flatten out a little bit more like that. All right? So as the odd function goes up, 
this turn section is going to flatten out more. And as it goes higher, it's going to get more like a saddle. This one is going to flatten out until it turns into a saddle, but that gets into a different type of problem. Okay. Square root of x is pretty simple. That right there. What can you not have under the even index of a radical? Negative. Negative. So that's why it starts at zero. Okay. Now you can have a radicand under here, x minus three, x minus four, but we're going to get into that. That's called the horizontal shift. And we'll get into that. Absolute value, just remember. Absolute value. And for you Alkies, absolute what? Vodka. vodka. Both the value and vodka start with a what? V. <laughs> so this looks like a V. For you Alkies. Yeah. Is it always touch zero? Fused United 8. That's for the Alkies. All right. Is it now you've zero? got 1 over x. Sweet. Half volcano. These are Hubert's terms. Okay. Half a volcano looks like this. Where this one is what? The full volcano. And these are your parent graphs or your family of graphs. Now, we're going to center. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to center on this guy. This guy right here is what we're going to talk about. But while I'm showing you this, I might as well show you the parent graphs. Okay, we're going to focus on the parabola quadratics in this section. And we may get into some other ones later on, but right now, we're going to talk about this. Now, what I'm fixing to show you with the vertical and horizontal shifts, uh, shifts apply to all of these graphs. These are the originals. Okay, let me, let me explain what I mean by that. When you go and buy a car, let's say you go and buy a Ford F-250 or a truck, whatever. And you go buy a Ford F-250. 250, is there different models of the F-250? Yeah. Yeah. Some has roll-up windows. Some have electric windows. Some have, you know, heated seats. So you've got a F-250, which is a stripped-down model with maybe an air conditioner. No extras, no stereo, no just for a, just for a work truck. And then you got a F-250 Lariat. And then you got a F-250 Super Lariat, Eddie Bauer, all this other good stuff. So there's different forms of the basic model, right? Same thing with a Mustang. You can go out and get a Mustang. They still make Mustangs with four cylinders in it. I remember at one time they made a Mustang with a four-banger in it. Four-cylinder Mustang, believe that. I think that was in the 80s. Four-cylinder turbo now, EcoBoost. Okay, so they do still make them, all right? But can you get one with a V6 in it? Yep. Can you get one with a V8 in it? Yep. Can you get one without power wind? They're different, but the basic model is the Mustang, all right? Here are your basic models right here. Everything that you're going to compare, you're going to compare to these guys with the quadratic being this guy f of x is equal to x squared. Everything after that is going to be air conditioning, power windows, heated seats, uh, V8 versus a V6. It's going to be added on extras. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say I give you the following problem. f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 2. 
Now, what's the first thing that you notice about this guy? Somebody tell me what you notice about it. It's going to be a parabola. Well, it's going to be a parabola, but what else do you notice about it? It's not going to be at the axis, zero. It's not going to what? You kind of faded out there. Um, because of the negative two, it's not going to be at the zero, zero point. Okay, that's good. The y-intercept is negative two. That's real good, whoever said that. Okay. We'll give you a gold star tomorrow. That wasn't you. Don't raise your hand. That voice sounded too good. But that wasn't you. <laughs> Had to be a female. All right. Whoever it was. Um, it was her. Try to factor it. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you two will never give me four, so it's not factorable. That's right, class. One times two is the only thing you can do to get two, and it never is, never will give you one, and two will never give you what? Four. four. So you quit because you cannot factor. Cannot be factored. That's what you put on the test, right? No, you <laughs> put the quadratic form. I meant not the quadratic formula. Completing the square. Now, I don't want you to, I don't want you to worry about writing all this down. I want you to see what I'm doing. So don't write anything down while I'm doing it. Because I'll show you how to do completing the square in just a minute. Right now, I want to show you what the end product is so I can show you where we're going with completing the square. So, x squared plus 4x plus minus 2, sorry, is equal to 0. x squared plus 4x plus blank is equal to 2 plus blank. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to 6. And at this point, we know our vertex is equal to negative 2 and negative 6. We keep going. Solve for state the square root of x plus 2 quantity squared. And take the square root of this guy. And we get x plus 2 is equal to positive or negative. You have a work email. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of uh, 9 is 3. 2.5 is right here. 4 to 9 is what? 5. Half of 5 is 2.5. So the square root of 6.5 is 2.5. So I'd say it's probably around 2.4. So x is equal to positive or negative 2.4 minus 2, which will give me 0.4 and negative 4.4. So now I can take my handy dandy graph and I got a vertex of negative 2, negative 6, and I got a y-intercept of 0.4, and a, I mean x-intercept of 0.4, y-x-intercept of negative 4.4. I got a y-intercept, as she said a while ago, negative 2, and I've drawn a what? A parabola. Now, the reason I'm showing you this it's because at this point right here, and I don't, you, don't, you ain't got to write this down. At this point right here, you have what we call a horizontal shift. And a vertical shift. You also have a one out here because there's nothing out there. Sometimes you got to factor out something. That's what we're going to spend the next week doing is completing the square. This one right here tells you it's the basic model parabola. You have a work email. It's the basic model, meaning the one that you got on your sheet. So you're going to have to take that basic model that you got on your family of graphs right here, and you're going to move it over two places to the left, and what? six places down and that's your new origin I mean that's your new dot that was right there you're going to move it two places to the left and six places down okay and that's what that's showing you that's why it showed that's why it gave me the vertex of that right there capiche now how many of you at the Anderson campus I'm sorry 
a Pendleton campus in Anderson Hall. How many of you have seen Complete and Square before? Yeah, I think I have. One. Okay, y'all seen it before. God, I'm very surprised. Usually it's one out of six. All right. How many of y'all have seen it here? Okay, good. How about any at the Easley campus? Can y'all hear me? Hello. <laughs> I just think some kind of acknowledgement. All right. So any of y'all seen it? No. Okay. Well, that's more familiar with what I what I hear, especially in college algebra. All right. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you do with completing the square is you set equal to zero. So one set equal to zero. Why? When you set when you set y is equal to zero, what are you finding? You're finding the x-intercepts, Hubert. Yeah, that's right. Out of the graphing section that we went over in the last unit. Yeah, that's right. Good. Glad y'all remembered that. Two. Move. C. I always love it when I go over number two because there's always one you person that says, where are you going to move it? Well, let me ask you a question. The quadratic form of a, a quadratic equation looks like this. AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. Okay? So if I tell you to move C, where is the only place that you can move it? Where zero is. Exactly, to the right-hand side. Because it's on what side? It's on the left-hand left. side. The only place you can move it is on the right-hand side. Unless it's already there. And if it's already there, you just leave it. Okay, so you move C. So you take C and you move it across the river. Of course, that changes the sign. All right, so that's the second thing you do. The third thing you do, add blanks both sides. Okay, right here, if you remember my third step, I added this blank. The reason I left that on is to catch anybody's type, and I can turn it off now. There we go. At this point right here, I added a blank there, and I added a blank there. That's my adding the blanks. Now, this next one is important. This next one is 90% of completing the square. Four. I'm going to take I'm going to take B. I'm going to divide it by two. And I'm going to square it. And then that number, I'm going to add, put in both what? Blanks. Now what that does is number five, doing number four. gives us shortcut one or two on left hand side. As soon as you do number four, you've got shortcut one or shortcut number two on the left hand side. As soon as I added this four right here and this four right here, I had shortcut number what on this side? Mm -hmm. Two pluses. What is two pluses? One. Shortcut number one. And then you can turn it into this, which gives you your horizontal shift. Okay. What do you do on the right-hand side? You just add the two together. Six. At this point, you have your vertex. 
vertex is the opposite of both numbers. Go back to the example. Okay, where is my two numbers? After I do the shortcut and I add the side, where are my only two numbers in the problem? Two and six, Hubert. That's right, class. So the opposite of two is two. negative two. What's the opposite of six? six. And that's your vertex. Number seven, solve <coughs> x or x is. Because sometimes you're just going to have one x, and sometimes you're going to have two x's. And that's basically completing the square. Now there's, t now, there's other ways to show completing the square. There's another way where you do everything on the left-hand side of the equal side. I don't show that way because that's confusing to students. Okay? I've shown all different <laughs> ways to students, and I've found that this is the easiest way for students to grab a hold of. All right? That's why I teach this method versus other methods. There is another method to this. It's more complicated, and that is when you have... So this is this right here is right here where a is equal to what? One. Just like I showed you right here. See that one right there? That's a. This one right here. That's a. Ax squared plus bx plus c. When a is not equal to one. You got a more challenging. I don't know how to spell challenging. That don't look right. And more challenging, complete the square. And when we get ready for that, I'll show you. There's two types of completing the square. One, when A is equal to one. The other one, when A is not equal to one. And that's when you get a number outside this parenthesis here, that is like a 2 or a 3 or a negative 2 or a negative 6, and that tells you something totally different. Okay, now what you need to do now is fold that in half. And let's do one. And the good thing about completing the squares, I don't have to think about do this factor or not because it works 100 and what percent of the time so x squared minus I'm going to treat y'all real nice 4x minus 7 is equal to 0 alright I want you to take the next couple of minutes and I want you to see what you can do with it and follow these steps that's why I gave them to you Time I look at that shirt, I think that's blue ribbon. No, it's really like <laughs> a show pair thing. It's just got, it's just got <laughs> that look. Every time I see it, it looks like Pat's blue ribbon, which I think is kind of bitter. That sounds like terrible. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm an alcoholic, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I don't drink that much, really. The same beer and the same wine that's in my refrigerator has been there for six months, so. I'm not that bad. Uh, if you're keeping white wine in your fridge for six months, I would not drink that anymore. Well, that I goes probably, bad after like three days at most. I don't drink it, so. That's a good thing. You wouldn't be here actually, the next day. Actually, the reason I have wine in my refrigerator is because Truck cooking. County had to take the wine test in here one day, and they were going to throw away these bottles of wine, so I just said, well, I'll take them home. And I put them in my refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to see them throw them away. They've been sitting there ever since. Can I do the wine tasting? <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people got drunk here that night. 
<laughs> All the teachers were. <laughs> That's what wine testing is for, right? No, I'm just kidding. I don't want to offend anybody. Y'all heard about Vegas this morning, right? Yep. I mean, I haven't read anything about it. I just heard there's a shooting, but I haven't read uh, anything. Last count, it was 50 dead and over 200 injured. It's all over the radio. So... I, I, my phone's been blown up in the hour. Well, they killed him. Yeah. Uh, they believe <laughs> it was killed himself before officers got to him, adding that they had found 10 other rifles stored. Holy cow. He planned on doing a lot. He's in like damage. another building. He's like, yeah, he was in a hotel. Like a floor or something. Mm -hmm. It's insane. The Las Vegas shooting was the deadliest in modern U.S. history. Yep. Whoa. It's awful. Time is really freaking me out. That's a prime example of guns don't kill people, people kill people. Crazy people kill people. Yeah. Them guns could have sat in that hotel room for a month. They killed, like he killed himself before the place got to him. So they haven't, they haven't I mean, they couldn't talk to him, obviously. But I don't know if he left in there. They'll all holler. Gun control, gun control, gun control. I could set my 45 right here on this table and it'd sit here forever and not kill anybody. The only time that gun will kill somebody is when somebody what? Pulls the trigger. Somebody picks it up and pulls the trigger. Oh, it was an outdoor concert? Yeah. Good God. I'm just glad it wasn't a George Strait concert. Oh. There's been more people. Like two. Two hundred. If it had been a George Strait concert, it had been like. Holy cow. It was a 64 year old man who did it. Uh, that's so weird. Yeah. Why is an old man shooting up a concert? <coughs> I think he has some problems. Because people are crazy. It's the it's real world. the 32nd floor of a hotel he shot from. It's it the real world. The 32nd floor of the Mandalay Hotel. All right, what's the first step? Las Vegas. Uh, that's true. It's Las Vegas. Sir? That equals what's the first step? Okay. Back to back. What's the first step? Move C. Set equal to zero. Move C. Well, it's already set equal to zero, so that's done. <laughs> so, what's so, well, the second step? The first I'm sorry. Step. <laughs> Move C. And you can add the blanks at the same time. All right, we've done three. What's four? Five, two, That'd be two, and then square it, and what would that be? Four. Four. And now you've got shortcut number what? Two. 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 Which will give you x minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 11. And at this point, you can tell me my vertex. 2 my and vertex? negative 11. Positive 2 and negative 11. So out to the side, vertex is equal to positive 2, negative 11. Now, I also need to tell you this. The book or some test will tell you to put it in intercept form. At this point, you'll need you to write intercept form. And you need to put an f of x in front of it and bring the 11 over. So f of x is equal to x minus 2 quantity squared minus what? 11. Now the reason I'm putting this in orange is because when we're doing completing the square we don't need this but sometimes the test or the homework will ask you to put it in intercept form and that is f of x is equal to a times x plus h quantity squared plus k. That's, that's the intercept form. You're going to see this again later. Okay, so all this, in this right here, I'm going to put in a cloud. This right here is for your information, and I will put it on all the examples in a different color meaning that it's not necessarily part of your work 
but you need to be aware of it if they ask you for that form. So I'm going to keep on going now with the black. X minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 11. I'm going to solve for X. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. 3.5 is in the middle. 9 to 16 is 7. Half of 7 is 3 and a half. Square root of 12.5. I'd say it's around 3.3. .3. Somebody check me. What's the square root of 11? Ooh, square root of 11. You want like a radical outside or what? How do you want that? Or like an actual Square root of 11 equals in your calculator? 3.31 or 3.32. This is a miracle. I did that without a calculator. X is equal to positive or negative 3.3 plus 2. What's $3.30 plus $2? $5.30. $5.30. dollars What's If you owe somebody $3.30 and you give them $2, you still owe them what? $1.30. And there's your two x-intercepts. Now, we need to make a note here. Answers may be radicals. Okay, they may want you to put them in form of a radical. So this would be square root of 11 plus 2. That would be the answer. Or 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. Which is senseless because can you plot that on a, on a number line? No. You have to turn it into a what? A decimal for you to plot it. So my, my personal opinion is do what you need, not what they want, but it's whatever. Now, my homework for you is to make up five or six of these. Do not. Do not put anything in front of this X except for a what? A 1. So that means X squared plus 4X minus 5. X squared minus 2X plus 7. X squared minus 3X minus 2. All I need you to do is make five. It's not really hard, and use the completing the square, okay? Yes, sir. That's your homework. Do nothing else. I will see y'all whenever I see y'all again. When is that? Wednesday. Okay? Aprende. Y'all have a good day. See y'all later.